welcome back to Dodger Band Life. And uh, today we're going to be doing the uh, rear differential fluid first because that's the last maintenance item left on this car, um, other than the brakes and power steering and stuff like that. But um, those seem to be working fine, so I'm going to ignore those for now and get to working on the differential. And while I'm under there, I'm going to check out the EVAP solenoid that's located in the rear and then also see if I can maybe replace the uh, the shocks and the springs with some coilovers and you can see here I need to replace these lug nuts because uh, it looks like this one this one is not that's not normal <laughs> it's not supposed to be like that but uh getting rid of these lug nuts because they're all mismatched it looks like like these are like tall and these are short I don't know what what <laughs> what the deal is with these, but get get rid of these and then put on some new ones that I got. That should make this very safe because uh, I think on this side it's actually missing a lug nut. Yeah, it just doesn't even have one on the side right there. So um, that'll make this car a little bit safer. And yeah, so let's get to work. All right. Well, there's the wheels off. Um, I know. That the correct way to lift the rear of the car is to lift it by the differential but um i don't know the yeah there's no real jacking points on this car <laughs> and uh i mean there's the crease the standard crease but uh you can see it's been mangled already by somebody and i contributed to that just now by trying to jack it up via the crease um but yeah i decided maybe doing this one side at a time might be safer or better. So looking at the lug nuts here, <laughs> you can see that, so these are kind of the correct style. I mean, they're different sizes here. It's kind of weird. Um, so two of them are the same, but this one's different. Almost seems like a lock, a lock nut or whatever. And then these are acorn style. So these are not the correct style of lug nut to be putting on this wheel. And on top of that, they like three of them were really loose. So whoever had this car before, just did not do a good job of torquing anything um, to proper spec. So, <clears throat> well, those are being replaced, so that's fine. Um, looking at the back here, you can tell that this ball joint is pretty much shot, it looks like. The boot's torn. It doesn't look like there's any um, grease in it. I'm not sure if these are serviceable, actually. Uh, I don't know if I can press these out, maybe, and replace them. Um, so that's probably going to go on the list. I'll do some research about that uh, to replace. And then let's see what else is going on here. This got some weird. I don't. I've never uh, seen this type of suspension setup before. Um, these. I guess this would be. This is the control arm, right? Or the yeah. And then this would be something else. But this is also on a ball joint type deal. And these are also shot, so that could be where the clunking is coming from. Um, as far as the rear brakes and stuff, uh, I mean the pads look pretty good. Just looking at it from this angle, uh, obviously I can't see them um, on the rotor itself. But they look like they got some meat to them, but I mean I'll replace those eventually anyway. Um, just for peace of mind. Oh, let's shake this thing, make sure it's not going to fall on me. Yeah, I think it's fine. And then here's the shock and spring. Um, looks pretty self-explanatory. Looks like these two bolts here, and then whatever's holding it up from the top. Uh, not sure. It looks like it might shoot out, so I might need to compress the spring. Oh, okay, never mind. There's a, a bolt and a nut right here, so those come undone, and then it's just a straight drop-in. So as long as I can get to these uh, nuts on the top side um, and take these out, it should come right out. Seems like pretty easy. So yeah, hmm. All right, well, first things first, let me go ahead and do the differential fluid, and then we can talk about this nonsense later. All right, well, after looking at the differential, um, the fill and drain plug are actually on the, the passenger side so uh, lifting it up on the driver's side doesn't really help me it's pretty tight under there so I think what I'm gonna do is wait until I lift up this side 
to do this side um, and then just change out the shock and the spring since it's right there um, first and you can see here I've opened the trunk and this is pretty easy to access so this should be pretty quick so let me go ahead and um, start working on that all right well uh, that took a little bit more work than I thought to get out uh, <laughs> but it came out um, as you can see here um, side by side with the coilovers that I got, I got the Tane, 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 uh, Street, Street something, Flex, Z something, whatever. Anyway, um, you can see the size difference are quite a bit lower, uh, maybe by like an inch and a half, I want to say. That might be weird. I might be doing like a lowrider thing where the back's <laughs> way lower than the front uh, for a while until I get to the front. Um, but... In order to get those out, I had to undo the lower control arm here at the knuckle um, to push down on it uh, in order to make enough space for it to come out. Um, going back in will be a lot easier because the spring's a little bit, or the sh spring shock combo is a little bit shorter. Um, so I won't have to press down as much and stuff. Um, but as far as the knocking goes, I think the culprit is here. Right here you can see this control arm, uh, the pushing is just split, torn open. So that's probably what's causing the knocking. So maybe if I just replace this guy um, and maybe some some of this stuff, uh, just make it more um, sturdy and with better bushings, that would probably be good. Uh, so I'll go ahead and look at those parts and get them on order to do in the future at some point. But uh, yeah, other than that, I think those springs and shocks are actually decent. Um, they're not that bad. Um, so those probably are not what was causing the clunking and it's more these uh, broken bushings and stuff uh, and whatever else in there. Um, I just figure I'm just going to replace pretty much everything I see um, and that'll kind of fix everything. You know what I mean? No, no, there shouldn't be any clunking after that. Huh. Well, these top hats for the coilovers don't look like they're going to work, um, actually. <laughs> Because if you can see here, the pattern on these is kind of, uh, it's like three corners. And then these are like kind of like an equilateral triangle. So, yeah, that's definitely not going to work. Um, hmm, interesting. Yeah, that's not good. I mean, I guess I can try swapping the top hats over. Um, this looks like it's one piece though. Yeah, these are welded together. Uh, and if I were to do that, it'd be way too long. Hmm, interesting. Well, that is a problem. Because the top hats aren't the correct top hats. And I pulled all four, just to kind of compare. And yeah, they don't fit. So, I mean, I think I'm pretty sure I bought the right ones. Uh, huh. That is a bummer. Uh, I'm trying to think what I can do here to salvage this. I'm not sure that there is anything I can do. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, they sent me the wrong ones, looks like. Um, I ordered them for GS300, and according to this manual, it's only for the Japanese Supra, the US Supra, and the Lexus SC, but no GS. Oh, that's not good. So I guess what I'm going to be doing is, uh, huh, well, that's not drivable like that. I mean, the shock is good, so I might as well just put it back together, I'm guessing. And then these, I'll either try to return and get the right ones, or uh, do something else. But yeah, um, that's a bummer. I'm gonna have to figure something out for this. Oh, got it all apart, got that thing out too. Well, I guess it was good practice. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna have to figure something out about that, because returning that's gonna be kind of difficult too. I guess I'm gonna, I've contacted them on eBay and if anything I'll put in a complaint with eBay and at least get my money back. Uh, 
I mean, it sucks that I can't freaking install them, though. Uh, I would rather just have the correct part and just install them and be happy, you know what I mean? Instead of having to go through all that process of returning or um, exchanging or whatever the hell. Because uh, shipping's not cheap because these are heavy. Um, and on the return policy, it said buyer pays for shipping. I hope not. If they sent the wrong part, then it's their fault. They should pay for the shipping, you know what I mean? So, but even that, I, I gotta take, you know, lug the box over to UPS or wherever and ship it. Um, it's just a lot of trouble that I didn't need to go through. So, I'm pretty disappointed um, in this. Uh, maybe I can find some top hats from somewhere, I don't know, or freaking make some um, myself out of steel or something. <laughs> and uh, I thought about maybe drilling some holes that sort of match up to this but I mean that's probably not going to be easy and I'm not sure that I can even do that because the shape of the top hats are just completely different um, it's just the wrong part so um, I mean the other thing I could do is possibly cut the top hat of this one off and then you know somehow freaking make it fit you know somehow some way but um, I shouldn't have to do that especially because I paid like 800 bucks for these so you know for 800 dollar part there's no reason um so and that that would just create so much work and unnecessary so i'm just gonna put this guy back in and change out the diff fluid and call it a day because uh that sort of ruined my day right there um just not having the correct parts come in and there's nothing else i can really do anyway um just gonna revert the car back to how it was at least in the back change the diff fluid and call it good um, good enough to drive around at least until the new parts come in, um, whatnot. So yeah, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, not happy at all. That is a bummer. I mean, that was a lot of work to get out. Um, I mean, I guess not that long. I took, it took about an hour probably to get out of there. Uh, but still, you know what I mean? Now I have to put it back in. So an hour here, an hour there. It just wasted. I could have been just sleeping or, you know, eating something or watching TV or something, but just because, uh, and how would I know that the part wasn't the right part, you know what I mean? Like it says it is. I guess I should have compared before I took the shock out, at least the top hats, and see if the, the pattern was the same. Uh, I didn't think to do that. Um, but then again, I don't think that's my fault, you know what I mean? I ordered the parts and they should have fit the way they should fit. It wasn't a mistake on my part at all, at all. Because um, on the listing it had this car, you know, to specifically 2001 GS300 um, on the listing. So, yeah, it's a bummer, but it is what it is. And, yeah, I'm just going to end the video here because <laughs> there's no reason for you to see me, you know, watch me put all this stuff back. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'll figure something out. But, yeah, thanks for watching.